I was literally staying taking shots. I was uh, excluded <laughs> from your so panel. He's an, so. honor, he's an honorary <laughs> member. Mm. For the all right the time. He's a permanent <laughs> invitee. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. And then where's the timer in terms of, remember, where's Lesejo? Lesejo? Right, and then also just to double check that we're keeping on time with the 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. We're good. So just a question, when we speak, are we speaking to the net or are we speaking to camera? Speak, because this is, it's like you guys are talking okay. to one another, mm -hmm. it will feel more comfortable mm -hmm. if you talk to one another. Okay. But just note that <laughs> your, your two, your, this is your camera, camera. Yeah. Okay. so you will be filming with it, and then you two are in this camera ah. over here. Yeah. And then there is a wide shot of all, all of you that we cut to. Um, right. So if you want to say anything to people out there, you're going to look over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have the QR code? the women in broader society, NTN continues to help in developing and upskilling women girls to ensure that they actively participate in the digital economy. This year's theme for the International Women's Day is Digit All. I'll say it again, Digit All. Innovation and technology for gender equality. My name is Lynette Marjo, for those that don't know me, a Momo Digital and a Yova brand ambassador, as well as an aspiring conversational strategist. It is an honor and privilege for me to host this year's MTN International Women's Day webinar. And I won't, I'm not alone, as you can see, I'm sure, you know, you'll see. I'm joined by phenomenal powerhouses. So I hope you guys are ready. They're featured in this month's edition of the Tribe magazine. I love the Tribe magazine slogan, one movement, one continent, one globe, 
and one tribe. I'm proud, and I'm sure all of you are, proud to be a part of the Yellow Tribe. So, you know, I know I said digital, but you know, we never, you know, you still need that pen and paper. So get your notebooks ready, get your gadgets ready, because you'll need to jot down the pearls of wisdom that will be shared with us. Some housekeeping rules. Feel free to engage with us via the chat box. With thousands of you joining online, I know it's going to be very difficult for us to answer all your questions, but please feel free to email us at sustainability at mtn.com. I'm sure somebody's going to drop it in the chat box for you as well. We also need your participation. We'll be having a Mentimeter that will be running during the course of our conversation. Please do participate by scanning the QR code. I think it's going to come up on your screen or just at the bottom of your screen. If you can't see the QR code, please go to www.menti.com. I'll say it again, www.menti.com. -E and type in the code 85260415. 852-60415. Our question for you on the Metimeter. So guys, I really need you to participate because at the end of it all, we're going to see the results. Our question for you on Mentimeter is, what solutions need to be put in place for a more inclusive workplace? I'll repeat it again. What solutions need to be put in place for a more inclusive workplace? Hmm. So get those words rolling. Don't worry, I'm also going to participate. I've got it here on my screen. So I'm going to put in my words as well. Let's also get trending on social media. Please hashtag doing for tomorrow today. Take your selfies on screen. I mean, I'm definitely going to be putting my picture up here. You guys got me on camera, right? You got my picture. We're going to take my picture, put it on social media. Hashtag doing for tomorrow today. Now we're going to jump straight into it. We'd like to pay tribute to and honor each and every one of you phenomenal women. Let us watch the video montage celebrating women from all walks of life. 700 million. It's hard to understand a number so big. Just imagine 700 million points of view, 700 million new ideas, 700 million careers, 700 million dreams, but just as many deepest fears. 700 million. That just happens to be the number of women in Africa. We know that a better tomorrow includes everyone, regardless of their gender, with equal opportunity, with equal respect, and equal participation in our continent's agenda. We also know that it's not enough to know. It's about the work you've done and what you have to show. of things that you do for that priceless point of view that could come from only you for the elders that continue to fight for what's right and light the way and the young girls that one day will fan those flames 700 million women 700 million reasons million women are we not just amazing imagine you're one of those 700 million women amazing women we see them and we are them when you think of how MTN Exco has drastically changed from the time most of us have been here where we only had one woman female one woman on the Exco board up until now where we have four amazing women speaks volumes on how MTN has changed and is changing. And driving that change, we have none other than our group president and CEO, Ralph Mapita, to give us a message on gender equality and leveraging technology to drive the gender equality agenda forward. 
Unfortunately, you know it's that time of the year. Ralph couldn't be with us here in studio, but he has recorded a message for us. So now we're going to go and listen to Ralph. This International Women's Day, UN Women and the United Nations chose the theme Digit All, Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. Recognizing the important role that technology plays in unlocking the advancements of gender equality. As a telecommunications company, the theme resonates fully with us and is a testament of the recognition of the role of the sector. Today, a persistent gender gap in digital access keeps women from unlocking their full potential and societies more broadly. Where access is available, digital technology is opening up doors for the global empowerment of women and girls. As I've visited the countries we operate in, I see women at the forefront of driving growth and innovation. The faces of women merchants who drive financial inclusion, the women at our call centers, the network engineers, and the women in the boardroom inspire me with their competence, impact, perseverance, and determination. For us at MTN, we recognize that we need to play our part and be deliberate about the gender equality agenda. We have put some key commitments forward and we are working to achieve these. We set ourselves a target to achieve gender equality by 2030. I'm pleased to inform you that we're sitting at 40% today. We need to keep pushing this forward, increasing female representation across all areas of the business, including at the executive level and the boards. We want to see higher representation of women within technology roles with the goal of achieving at least 30% by 2030. We have made some progress over the last couple of years and are sitting at 17%. We obviously need to do a lot, lot more. To close the gender pay gap, last year I mentioned we had done a gender pay study to analyze if there were inequities in gender pay. Today we have taken tangible actions to close that gap. We hope that this makes some difference to the lives of the impacted women and their loved ones across our business. We have also taken uh, good strides in ensuring girls and women in our communities are empowered and upskilled. In 2022, we reached 2.6 million women through our CSI initiatives, upskilling them in coding, robotics, data science, and other ICT-related skills. This progress is only the beginning. We need to remain focused and ensure our gender equality remains front and center of everything we do. We recognize that we still have a long way to go until women feel they truly belong at MTN and broader society. We need to be true to who we are and the values we strive to live by as an organization. To drive the advancement and empowerment of women and girls in society, we will be hosting a series of dialogues to ensure that we have continued discussions around issues that matter to women in the business, the communities we operate in, and broader society. We are also pleased to be having this discussion today and to be launching MTN's Women at Work platform, which will be an important and pivotal channel for us to promote and foster our vision for gender equality at the workplace. In the face of escalating global crises, we stand at the crossroads. Allow technology to widen existing disparities and further concentrate power in the hands of a few, or put it to work on behalf of a safer, more equitable and sustainable world. Together, let's make sure that all women feel seen included and supported both at work and in broader society. Let's realize a digital world, one that is safer, more inclusive, and a much more equitable world. Feel seen, feel included, feel supported. Thank you so much for that, Ralph. We appreciate you and appreciate all your efforts at driving, the, at driving gender equality. He's no stranger to any MTNer, having been with MTN for, from almost the beginning. He has seen many changes and implemented many diversity and inclusion programs. Today he's here to launch and give us insights on a new Women at Work platform. Let us welcome our one and only Group Chief HR Officer, Paul Norman. Paul, what are we doing for tomorrow today? Thank you, Lynette, and let me start by saying happy International Women's Day to all the women across our yellow family. Women are the cornerstone of our business and society at large. Ensuring that you have an environment where you can thrive is of utmost importance to us. Over the past year, you may have noticed that there were many efforts to drive gender equality in MTN and the progress that has been made in this regard. 
we've made some important strides to deliver on our ambition for a gender equal MTN by 2030. We're making steady gains also on our targets, ensuring a higher representation of women in critical roles. We're working steadily on improving our pay parity through various targeted measures, and our responsibility is ensuring gender equality in the workplace and that women have access to opportunities, career growth, access to networks, and safe and supportive spaces. Today, particularly, I'm excited to share that we're continuing our efforts with the launch of our Women at Work Network, our very first in-house digital platform that showcases and connects our 5,000 plus strong women talent to the entire organization. This platform helps build your professional profile, network with others, search for opportunities, explore your interests, as well as learn from and share your experiences with other women. In the near future, you'll be able to connect with coaches from across the footprint and have access to exclusive thought-provoking content. Of course, this is a women-exclusive platform, which means that the content you share in the discussion forums or the information you'll have access to is tailored specifically to women. But we also have a yellow directory, which will be open to all MTNers to search for skills, capabilities, and subject matter experts among our professionals across the footprint. A space where you can be discovered by anyone in MTN for your skills and experience and for opportunities. Keep a lookout for communication coming to you around how you can assess the platform. This platform is just one of the many ways we're continuing to create an environment where all women feel seen, valued, and appreciated for all the many roles you take in on our lives. I encourage you to make the platform your own and use it as part of your daily life. Stay tuned for a sneak peek of what M Women at Work is about and enjoy the rest of International Women's Day. We have some interesting sessions and speakers ahead. And I'm looking forward to being part of the Women at Work platform. MTNers, it's exciting stuff. I hope you're excited. And please do join the platform. Now for the moment we've been waiting for. Our MTN tribe, our phenomenal powerhouses, award winners, inspirational speakers, change makers, the forces to be reckoned with. We have, we have, sorry, we are excited to have such a prestigious panel. You see, I'm even nervous. I can't even speak. Like, I'm sitting amongst two of them, and I've got two of them online. But, you know, each of these unique women hold executive roles within MTN and continue to add invaluable leadership to our business. Their stories of success are compelling, and we look forward to unpacking some of their views and opinions today. When any of them opens their mouths to speak, I'm always moved or inspired. I know many of you are too. To be in their presence is something I never take for granted. Let us give a virtual standing ovation and a round of applause for our amazing panel. Joining us online, we have Mitwa Ngambi, Sylvia Mulinge, Mapula Mubire, Uche Ofodile, and of course, with me in studio, Yolanda Kuba and Nompilo Morafo. Ladies, happy International Women's Day. Yay! I know it's like excitement. Hello, hello to those online. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi. Happy, Happy Women's, Women's, Women's Day. Day. Ladies, are you all well online? 
We're all good. We are digital. We're good. That's good. With so much knowledge in the room and not enough time, I'm going to ask that we please try and keep it brief. I know, I know, we love to speak, but time is of the essence and we don't have enough time. Maybe next year, Nampilo, a full day Five seminar? Hours. Five hours, a full day, full day. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to begin our conversation, Yolanda, Sylvia and Nampilo, this one is for you. Migration of female leaders across companies and continents. Global trends, you know, much like MTN, are experiencing that there isn't enough material growth in the number of women in leadership positions. Despite increased number of women within the succession pool, we're also seeing an increase in increasing number of women who are migrating to other companies and most noteworthy, other companies outside of Africa. Yolanda, AKA Madam VP, how do you think we can solve this challenge, especially reg regarding keeping African talent within African countries and companies? Thanks, Lynette, for that question. And happy International Women's Day for everyone, every woman that is on screen and who's listening in uh, this afternoon. Um, I mean, the real reason why people leave is because they're dissatisfied about something. And it is that dissatisfaction that we actually have to deal with as companies and as individuals and society in general. So. In my notes, I actually wrote three things that actually we need to be able to respond to or be deliberate about. The first one is really companies to be, need to be deliberate about making a difference in their society. In other words, be purpose-led, but not only just talk about it, about just about making a difference, but also walk the talk. So in other words, what needs to happen is that companies need to match what they are saying with what they are doing. And this is where women actually tend to actually leave companies. Because the more uh, someone tells you, you can make a difference in your continent, in your society, and you can see it happen, the more likely that you're going to stay if, uh, if you're feeling like you're making an impact. Secondly, we actually have to be deliberate as well as about uh, how we respond to global dynamics that are actually happening around us. The intentionality of responding to that is important. There are a couple of realities that we live with. The first one is, and I'll mention only four here, the Northern uh, Hemisphere, the population is aging. They need new blood, they new, need new skills. So obviously people wanna leave from here. And the Northern, uh, hemisphere also offers better opportunities, better paying, paying jobs with better quality of life. We, this is another reality that we have to make our friend. We live at this stage in Africa in patriarchal society in a lot of places, which means that success or opportunities are defined along the gender lines. And that is also a challenge. And then obviously we have to make our, uh, um, the whole issue around COVID a reality for us as well. That COVID has fundamentally changed how we work and our expectation of work. It has decoupled basically productivity to location, whereas we were forced to be in one place to actually be productive. Now we don't have to be. And that actually opens up a whole lot of opportunities for people to be in one country and be effective and productive in another. So what is the solution? Partner with Global North on, on, on some of the talent mobility or employee exchanges, ensure the EVP that we actually talk about, uh, and this is something that MTN has been doing a lot on, is, is, um, is in, in totality very effective. And it is something that is compelling for every employees and it covers 360 degrees of what an EVP should actually look like. Uh, create opportunities for internal mobility and promotions and be quite deliberate about it. And then lastly, pay parity. And I'm glad that uh, uh, Ralph was talking about pay parity for women because this is still remains a key challenge. And the last one, so there were three things, and th the last one is create a conducive culture for women to actually be able to thrive and actually stay in the environment. A lot of women leave the culture that they are in in an organization. They, are, they love their job, but the culture is so toxic for themselves that they actually say, I cannot, uh, do, 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 uh, can, I cannot succeed in this place. So how do we do that? Meritocracy is something that we have to promote very heavily 
It doesn't matter who you are, what gender you are. If you are able, you are the most capable person in the room, you are the one that gets the job. Clarity, honesty, transparency, respecting boundaries, safety and security of women. This is something we don't talk a lot about, but I was glad again in the, in the conversation earlier with Ralph, he mentioned safety as a key issue as well. Fair and reward, com uh, fair reward and compensation and equitable treatment are some of the issues that I highlighted that we really need to look at in, uh, holistically. Back to you. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm just going to round it up on those three points. You said companies need to be deliberate, how we respond to society, pay parity and create con conclusive, sorry, conducive culture for women. And again, we did say we're running a Mentimeter, so she threw some words out there. You're more than welcome to use them. Clarity, transparency, safety. So, you know, use those words, participate in our Mentimeter. Sylvia, this one is for you. What do you think may be contributing to a high turnover of female leaders within companies? And what are some of the solutions to preventing this? Um, I think the thing is, and, and, and I speak as a woman who has just recently joined uh, MTN uh, from the outside world, and um, I think if you, if you just come back to our predisposition as women, um, we thrive in an environment where we are appreciated, we thrive in an environment where we are nurtured, and I like what Paul said about the fact that it, we are seen, we are heard, and that our voices matter in the conversations that are being held around the table. And I think ultimately, if we as a company live up to what it is that we say that we are committing to, um, especially with regards to making space for women, um, ultimately for us to be able to embrace equity and have a lot more women at the table, especially in leadership positions, we don't only need uh, women who are courageous and are brave, but we also need enlightened men who are willing to make room for them. I know for me, uh, the position that I hold today is a decision that was made by a man uh, in a room who said that I'm willing to move the barrier and allow this woman to come and lead and take a bet on me. And therefore, I think the challenge that we all have, first of all, as leaders, is how much room are we creating uh, for other women uh, to be able to get onto the table. The unfortunate reality is that for women, the way we are constructed. We want to have everything 120% right before we approach the table. For men, if they have it 40%, they run towards it and they say their courage and confidence will carry the rest. So I think if we have a lot more uh, deliberate action and intentional action around uh, creating room for women to be able to come to the table and, and leaving that out. And then also being uh, courageous in terms of taking risks. Uh, this then will create um, the right signaling within the right within the environments that we're in, because then women will know that even as Yolanda has said, we are willing to live up to what it is that we're speaking to, um, and then create um, an environment where uh, women also feel that the voice that they give um, is appreciated, it is heard, it is seen, and that the content we are sharing with the world internally and, and externally is also being celebrated. I think with that then, um, the migration um, of, of women talent um, is going to be uh, contained um, and we'll see a lot more women participating and uh, actively being courageous and stepping up, raising their hands, raising their heart and saying, I'm willing to be counted, I'm willing to be part of the story that MTN is telling today. I love when you said, you know, we strive in an environment where we are appreciated, which is absolutely true, you know, and you did say, you know, we need to be courageous. Definitely agree with you there. Nompilo, what are the standout reflections on your experiences in business as a pan-African female leader, specifically in your role? Yeah, thanks, Lynette. And happy International Women's Day to everybody that's watching us, and particularly to all MTN women that are watching and the ones that are busy working, they will catch this podcast later. So in terms of my reflections, I think I've been fortunate to be in the position that I'm in because I get to see a lot. So gender diversity is one of the highest frameworks that are used to measure evaluations around investments, etc., especially when ESG criteria is concerned. And then that has made us really reflect deeply as an organization in terms of what are the barriers that we're seeing around gender diversity across 
not only MTN, across all corporates and also societies where we operate. And if I were just to reflect, I read somewhere a report by McKinsey that said, we are so behind in Africa that it will take about 140 years. 140 years for, MT for Africa as a continent just to catch up to equality. So that, that speaks volumes about the continent that we're in and the work that we still all have to do as leaders, as corporates, as governments, etc. So what, what is the problem? And if I reflect deeply, looking not only on corporates, looking at society at large, you find that we're still suffering from a lot of cultural roots in equity, and I call it inequity because if you look at how women are positioned in, po in society overall, Again, I heard somebody talking about how most Africans look at women and we say, women need to be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. And that's still very deeply entrenched in our culture, that women must be seen and not heard. What you say is not as important as how you showed up. So that, that, that speaks into our cultural nuances, our cultural differences that we see in our markets and across society. So it means we need to do more work in terms of changing the status quo not just in what we say, but in policy. So if I look at ESG and what we are doing, we need to look at how do we influence this conversation from policymakers' perspective, regulators, governments, corporates, etc. because there is something that needs to happen if a McKinsey's research will say we need 140 years to progress. What is the other thing that I've noticed? It's what Yolanda spoke about. I was lucky last year I attended the UN Women um, a society in New York where we met as women leaders, etc. And they said something very important. It was a leader who is female who happens to be in politics. And, and, and she's not African, but she says in her culture, what used to happen is that if you walk into any government building, there's a picture of a man and the man is a president. So as a young girl, when you, walk, when you grow up, what do you see? What, what do you interact with on your daily basis is the pictures of people that don't look like you. They don't represent you. So there's no reason why you don't want to aspire to be a VP or to be Ralph because you've never seen one that's female. That resonated with me so much, and this is why today is structured the way it is. Because I look around me at MTN and I say, wow, there are female CEOs, there's a female VP, there are female executives around me, there are women that are empowered, that are not only seen, but they are also heard. And they have influence and impact in terms of how the strategy of this organization moves forward. So I thought, why not put these people out and put them on the front page of a magazine? Because young children and young Africans watching this can look at Mapula and say, Mapula is the CEO of MTN Rwanda. So can I. Mm -hmm. So today for me is about that. It's about moving away from, from uh, just feeling sorry for ourselves in terms of where we are, putting our words into action. We need to action what we're saying. And there's also a notion that says women, we understand this better. Even ourselves as women, we need to understand what is our fundamental role in this journey and what it is that we need to do to see the change that we want to see in the world. So that's just my few reflections. We could spend the whole day, but you said we must be brief. So that's, <laughs> that's what I've reflected on for today. Absolutely, I'm loving yeah. this conversation, you know, for me, representation is definitely key. You know, we love the work that you're doing, you know, and like you said, that we need to unlearn that narrative, definitely, that women should be seen and not heard. And I love that MTN, as MTN, as we're driving away from that narrative. My next question is for you, Mita, Mitwa and Uche. Barriers to entry for women in the technology sector. While the number of women in technology roles is increasing, we're still not where we should be. Mitwa, for you, what barriers, what barriers to entry do we have, sorry, do we believe exist for women who are trying to get into more technical roles? Thank you, Lynette. And first and foremost, uh, bon fête de la femme en français and happy Women's Day in English. So good to see you. So great to be among uh, my sisters with a capital S-T-A-R-S. -S. Um, and you're absolutely right. And I'm listening to Nompilo, she, um, you know, leaned a little bit into the thoughts that I was having. And just so you know, I had all these notes uh, pretty much lined up for this conversation. But then this morning, I spent some time in a really engaging session with the ladies of MTN Cameroon, and they made me flip all my script uh, on the top of its head. And I stole some of the things that they were talking about this morning. And the question 
around barriers also came up. And something that I think we completely agreed on, which is what Nompilo hinted on as well, was the fact that we seem to be in a vicious cycle of lack of representation, breeding lack of representation, right? So the fewer women we see, the fewer women they are. And I know in some sectors, in some companies such as MTN, we're making progress, you know, day on day, year on year. I mean, at the moment, we're sitting here as four CEOs, which wasn't the case probably two, three years ago. So progress is being made. But when you take a step back and you look across the industry, you take a broader uh, scan of the environment, they just aren't that many women to whom people can associate and assimilate and, you know, as see themselves in and therefore also believe in themselves that they can do it too. I gave them a story this, this morning, uh, the ladies of MTN Cameroon, about how looking back now in hindsight, I was four out of 41 students in 2002 that enrolled in the University of Namibia studying computer science. You know, at the time, it didn't bother me at all. I wanted to study computer science. I went into school. I graduated. But it's only now that I'm looking around me searching for executives that are female in the technology sphere that you can't see them. And then you realize, actually, it doesn't stem. It doesn't necessarily uh, germinate from where we are today. It actually has roots even as far back as our educational system. So at the point where people are going into school and are not saying the fields of finance, economics, social sciences are not great, they're fantastic, but you see a lot of representation representation, female representation over there, which you don't tend to ne necessarily see in the technology sphere. So I think the lack of representation also within school, the fact that there are only four, for instance, out of 41 women uh, or girls, students studying computer science in the University of Namibia, makes one wonder as a woman, as a girl, should I be going into there? Do I belong into that environment? Then the conversation stemmed a little bit uh, different this morning, again, with girls like Dorette and Aline from MTN Cameroon, where they talked about, but hang on, me it doesn't start necessarily even at the point of university, because by the time you're coming to university, you've been raised in a household, right? So within the household, what conversations are we having with our children, both boys and girls, as to what their capabilities are? And Ompilo hinted on it as well that, I mean, we're also not naive to the fact that we grew, we grew up in an African society, we have African culture, and these conversations that we're having while they're progressive and progressing today in urban Africa, it's not necessarily the same in semi-urban and maybe even in rural Africa. And I gave an example of how I had a cousin, for instance, who uh, would go to school, um, you know, just like her brother, fall asleep in class, and the teacher would wonder why, why is this girl falling asleep in class? Until one day she was so overwhelmed by this feedback from a teacher that she says, listen, I wake up at four o'clock in the morning to go and fetch water. By the time I come back, my brother is up already. I'm making them breakfast. I'm doing the dishes. And then I go to school. And so, so you see, it, there's so much root and history to the way women are not present uh, today that, of course, we need to, as a society, look back and reflect. How do we start changing those things within our households, within our societies? And us who have come through the technology environment, who are now executives, how do we tell our stories a whole lot more so people can see that it's actually possible? One thing that the lady said this morning as well is that listen we cannot be what we can't see so the more we are seen the more people can be we cannot be what we cannot see definitely uche this one is for you what strategies or tools have you found useful in your own personal career development and overcoming some of those barriers Thank you, and I'm going to be a little bit redundant and say Happy International Women's Day again, especially to my team at MTM Benin. Um, we also had a really great session this morning. And before I answer the question, I just wanted to set a bit of context because it's important to understand, you know, to build on what Mitwa said, what's creating those barriers. Um, today, even women who have taken that leap into STEM jobs and technology jobs 50% of them are saying that they've experienced some form of discrimination through their recruitment process. And even when joining the organization, never feel like they're actually part of the organization, that they still feel like they are other. So that's a problem. Um, about 40% of women see gender bias as a significant barrier within technology job access as well. And in Africa, less than 5% of women hold computing jobs. So there's a lot of work to do. And I think for me personally, if I sort of turn the lens on myself um, in terms of what has been helpful to me, I think there were about four things that I, I really wanted to touch on. First is in becoming a CEO, because it was never on my radar, and I tell this story a lot, um, I had a coach who brought that to my attention, and a coach who was a woman, 
who said, you know, you need to look beyond what you're doing today. So she she helped steer me. You know, I was really great at marketing, and she, I, you know, she asked me one day, what is it that you want to do in the future? And I kept talking about doing bigger marketing jobs, and she sort of steered me in a very different direction. She said, have you thought about this? Because you have these skills. So this idea of having a coach and a mentor, and we see it as something soft, but it's critical in terms of ensuring that women are moving on to that next layer and that next level. The second thing for me that has worked as a strategy is being bold and courageous in my decisions around my career. Um, in becoming a CEO, I had to go to Kinshasa, DRC. You know, it was not on my radar. It wasn't my first choice of places to go work, but I felt very strongly about this next opportunity and I was willing to go to where the opportunity took me. So being bold and courageous as well. And I think the last point I wanted to, um, to sort of highlight is really being kind to yourself. Because the thing that we all have as we're coming, <laughs> coming up the ladder is the voices in your head and the voices outside telling you, you can't do it. All the things you cannot do, you will not be successful at. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and be kind to yourself, give yourself grace and understand that you know, this, this whole thing around technology provides us with many opportunity to, to sort of add to our toolkit, to improve ourselves, to give ourselves the skill sets to where we need to go. And so do not listen to those voices in your head. Be kind to yourself. Easier said than done. Do not listen to those voices in your head. I think as, uh, you know, women, those voices sometimes come so strong, so strong, but like you said, be, be bold and courageous, which is what we're going to do. Nompilo Yolanda Mapula, my next question is for you. Personal development and leadership growth. According to various studies published, the mentor experience relationship has the ability to positively influence women across all levels. Mapula, this one is for you. What has been your experience with allyship, especially from your male colleagues and superiors? Thank you, Lynette, and uh, happy International Women's Day to everyone. Um, really inspiring to listen to all these stories and experiences today. But I mean, uh, the question you ask me is particularly close to my heart because I believe I've really been one of the real uh, uh, success stories when it comes to allyship. Um, I think it goes without saying that we need allies. Often, you know, allyship is very much underestimated because it doesn't come in the normal format of a mentor or even a coach. It's often silent because it happens not necessarily with your knowledge. You know, allyship speaks to people who are generally speaking for you when you're not in the room. And I've really been very fortunate to have experienced this in my career at MTN, um, and particularly from a male perspective. Um, I've had lots of successes with mentors as well as allies who've really been there championing me whilst I was not in the room. And I think typically when you work in technology, you know, um, especially in a male dominated environment, you really need that support. And I'm very proud of the work that MTN is doing. You know, the He for She program, um, has really been quite instrumental in driving that very intentional allyship and really promoting um, male colleagues, supporting um, our, our uh, you know, female leaders. And I'm really um, excited about what this means for MTN because the more intentional and more deliberate we are with our male colleagues, um, male leaders across the company, we are able to really make sure that the development of women, empowerment of women is not necessarily limited to women, but it's actually something that is owned across the business. So really very much a positive story for me. And I really think, um, you know, he for she is, is really a great platform for that. Absolutely. He for she is definitely a great platform. And it's amazing that us as MTNers have access to that platform. Yolanda, this one's for you. What personal growth experience or piece of advice do you find most valuable on your journey to the top? I know you have the mentorship boardroom going on, you know, so, you know, what piece of advice would you give MTNers and those that are listening to us? Yeah, I mean, Lynette, I would say the single word I would use is courage. Because um, if I think about my journey, 
you know, my journey actually uh, started when I was fairly young. By 25, I was actually a deputy CEO of a, of a big kind of investment group. By 27, I was a deputy CEO of a listed company. By 29, I was a CEO of a listed company, right? And so what that meant is I had to have courage to actually show up every day. Courage to actually be able to say, I belong here. And in that, I actually started almost saying, how do I match what my expectations of myself and everyone's expectations that have appointed me to what I do every day? And the only way I could do that is go and ask for help. I had to go to the people that know what to do and ask for help. And, and the one thing that I then did well is choosing the right mentors. And also, because they were there to give me the right perspective, right? They had journeyed in journeys that I hadn't seen before. And then what I did, I had the opportunity, then while I was doing what I, I was doing, to attract the right sponsors, right? You choose your mentors, you choose your, 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 your coaches, but it is the, the sponsor, the, for the sponsors, they choose you. You have to be on your journey of success for them to be able to do that. And everyone here, Uche spoke about it, Mapula spoke about it, the role of mentors in their career. I also had a lot of mentors and a lot of sponsors who were able to speak for me when I was not in the room, that were promoting me and doing everything they could to be on my side when I wasn't there. So if you ask me one thing that I would say, I would say, competence, your level of skill, your level of um, application, and everything that you do will actually put you above average in terms of the workforce. However, what will really put you at the top, it's the courage, it's your attitude, and it's your network. If you are not working towards that, then you, you are the, your journey to the top, it's not that you're not going to make it, but your journey to, to the top will be a lot, a lot harder. When uh, Paul was speaking, he was talking about the program that we're actually launching at MTN. I'm super excited about it because it means that we now can have a mentor that is a click away. Mm. Please, everyone, use this opportunity. Absolutely. I love that. I really, really love that. Um, you said that, you know, attract the right sponsors, your attitude, your network. And definitely, I'm also excited about the Women at Work platform. Numbilo. Who would you say has been a big influence in your journey to get to the point that you are today? So, Lina, I, I like, I, when I see this question, I always have to think very deep because I, I, I've been lucky. I've come across many people. I always say that in your life, from the time you're born, you always have these angels <laughs> that are sent your way intentionally or otherwise to help you grow. So, so in my life and in my career, in everything I, I do, I don't take anybody or anything for granted. I grew up, you, you'll read in the tribe makers, and I grew up in a very little village. It's not on any map, so you won't find it. So, but I grew out of it. I go there often, but I became the person I am within that environment because I don't take the women in that village for granted. They are very wise. They've grounded me. They've raised me, and they're still my biggest support system. But growing, going through life, I meet the CEOs of MTN. I meet Yolanda. I meet a whole lot of people that have contributed in whichever form into the person that I become. And then there's that part of being deliberate about your mentors and being, so I've, I, I've got a few, so I won't call one by name because it'd be so unfair because they've all equally contributed to my life. But you need to be deliberate about your life. You need to be clear in terms of what it is that you want to achieve and do it. Because there's a difference between, uh, I always say the way I look at competence, there's competence that says, I know how to do this, and there's a deliberateness of learning that I may not know how to do this well, but maybe Mapula does, and Mapula has got a skill of something that I need to learn of. Ask Mapula, raise your hand, ask somebody. So be very deliberate about what you want to be, because then you attract the right energy into your life. So I never call out one person because I think the women that are on this platform and, the, and Tulu and Lele that missed it because they stuck at work, also contribute immensely into my growth within MTN itself, because we're here and there's a lot of other women underneath us and other women that are growing that we need to pull through in order for them to get to this level. So 
somebody said you need to have a 25-year-old mentor. That's very important because at some stage, I feel like in 40 plus, I don't know what I do not know anymore. So all of that contributes holistically to what you become in the success of in your journey. So, I, 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 so that's why I say I always struggle in picking a person. I think it's been a combination of a lot of people that have contributed to my journey so far. Be deliberate and clear about your life. Quote and unquote Nambilo. I told you, you must take notes, guys. These are going to come in handy. And when we're on that Women at Work platform, you know, we can always reference back or even add some inspiration there as well. Gender equity versus gender equality. Um, this question, who am I asking this question? Let's see. Hmm... I'm going to give it to Sylvia and Mitra. If we could just go back to the context of my question. Sylvia and Mitra, this one is for you. Gender equality, sorry, this one is for you. There is always a debate around gender equality and gender equity. Gender equality means there's an individual's rights, responsibilities and opportunities will not be determined by the sex they're assigned to at birth. While gender equity is the equal treatment or treatment that might be considered equivalent in terms of the rights and benefits, obligations and opportunities. Sylvia, what role do you think leaders play in advancing the gender conversation? I think when you think about equity, inevitably we all have to consider um, our makeup, our construct, our social backgrounds. And how then do you bring that all into play um, in terms of creating a place where diversity of voices are welcome, diversity of conversations are welcome, diversity in terms of expressions are welcome, so that everybody feels that they are getting the same level of opportunity as the other person. I think when we speak about equality, equality sometimes we, we tend to calibrate it and sometimes it can get out of hand. But I think when you, you think about a world where we're creating a lot more uh, I don't use the word equity again, but a lot more opportunity for everyone's voice to be had, a lot more inclusivity. The outcome that then we generate is an outcome that is a lot more reflective of the fabric of our society, are a lot more reflective um, of the backgrounds that we come from. And I think that's the beauty of, of, of especially doing it in, in an African context where we all come uh, from different countries, we come from different makeups. And if I can be in a place where I feel uh, that my leader is willing to respect my voice, to hear my voice uh, in spite of the background that I come from, then it creates a lot more um, environment to not only uh, create a team that is a lot more um, high performance in terms of the outcomes that they want to deliver, but it also inspires um, those who are coming after us to know that they also have a voice uh, at the table and that they can also uh, be had. So I think for me, the way I look at it is around a lot more inclusivity and then harnessing um, everything that we have that has made us who we are today. When you listen to Nampilo's story or you listen to Yolanda's story or any of the other women who are here, and even the great women who are representing the shape and, 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 and structure of the continent that we are privileged uh, to be part of, bringing that, all that in just creates, I think, a special magic and a special chemistry that then encourages um, a lot more movement in terms of what it is that we are trying to propagate and ensuring that we are every day doing for tomorrow um, today. I'll hand over to Mitra. Mitra, you can make it more colorful. What are some of the initiatives or practices that companies can use to ensure that we have equity as opposed to equi oh, sorry, equality within the workforce? No, and, and let me just tell uh, Sylvia, I don't think you can make uh, anything Sylvia says anything more colorful because she's so eloquent, just to give you a shout out, my dear sister, so eloquent um, in your own right. But um, Lina, to your question, I don't think, uh, to Sylvia's point, I don't think it should be one or the other. I think it's, I think it's both, uh, with the objective, obviously, of preserving diversity within organizations. And I spoke about this this morning as well, that it's not diversity really for diversity's sake. We're not talking uh, women at 50% for having women in the boardroom just for the sake of. It's really about ensuring that there's a diversity in views, diversity in experience, diversity in, in outlook. And even more on top of that, I mean, when you look at the consumers and 
the communities that we serve, um, the African continent is 50% women. So it's important that the voice of women is around boardrooms within organizations. So we're able to curate uh, experiences that are relevant to both genders. And we'll speak about diversity in the context of gender now, but with time and it's starting already and uh, Nompilo mentioned the 25 year old mentor, um, the fact that the uh, continent is currently 19 years in terms of median age, there's also talks now around diversity in form of age. So I, I really want to encourage everybody listening that as we talk gender equality and equity, it's really for the preservation of diversity, but also not just for the sake of it, but really making sure that we're getting the most out of the people who are in the organization, who to Sylvia's point can ensure that we're delivering the best for the consumers that we that we serve. And if I was to take some examples of things that institutions, organizations, and leaders should do, I think MTN Group is a very good example, right? So I think step one is to be super aware of the lay of the land, right? So MTN Group started out by understanding where are the women, how many women do we have, what geographies are they in, at what levels of leadership, etc. And from there, you're able to give a very stark reality, uh, you're, gonna, you're able to have very stark reality check of what the situation is and make now deliberate steps in order to correct that. With MTN Group, once again, a very bold ambition as far as, you know, a, an MTN 50-50 equal organization uh, should stand by the year 2030. Uh, like Nompilo said, if we don't make bold pronouncements like this and we continue at the pace at which we're continuing at, it's most likely going to be in 140 years where Africa as a continent is going to see an equal uh, environment. So very deliberate steps in that regard. Also, as far as gender parity uh, is, gender pay parity uh, is concerned, understanding uh, beyond just the numbers of women that we have at various levels of the organization, how is it that they show up in terms of remuneration, compensation, and benefits when you compare women of similar experience to men, similar background, of various similar levels, et cetera, et cetera, are we actually treating them fairly? Is there equity in the environment? But I think these are more the structural res responses, Alinette. There's one thing that I would add, though, is that I think as leaders, we have to be very deliberate about facilitating the facilitating the conversations within the organizations, right? Because like I said, we're not operating organizations in isolation of the cultures that we've been raised in. And we have been raised, you know, rightfully or wrongfully so, you know, one can argue for or against. We've been raised uh, in a society where, you know, they were gender defined roles historically. Of course, that is slowly changing. And we have to, we cannot ignore the fact that these are the same uh, communities that we're bringing now into the workforce. So uh, while we're making all these bold pronouncements, how do we make sure that everybody across the organization has had their opinion voiced, uh, co areas of concerns addressed, so much so that when there is an article, for instance, that comes out and says, you know, the three CEOs of MTN that have been appointed in Cameroon, Rwanda, and Uganda are female, that it's all received for the positive intent that it is. So facilitating conversations across all the levels, across all genders across all ages, I think, is the one thing that I would add on top of the most structural responses that MTN Group, I think, has done very well at. If there's one word that has come up so prominently in our conversation today is deliberate. You know, so I know that us as MTNers will definitely be deliver deliberate. But, ah! Deliberate. <laughs> deliberate. <laughs> deliberate about driving the conversation. Wow, MTNers, ladies, it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, this conversation could go on for days. I just want to thank and appreciate you, but you're not going yet. We've got some questions from our chat, from our chat box. I'm going to ask the first one to you, Uche. The question from our YouTube channel, what are you doing as a woman leader to raise other MTN women up? Oh, what a great question. Um, and thankfully, we just had a, an MTN women's session this morning. Uh, look, the first thing that, uh, you know, I did when I came here, I think we always have to start with the data to understand, you know, what is the situation within our organization. And we saw huge opportunities um, in terms of driving much more diversity and inclusion within the organization, not just at the leadership level, but throughout the organization, especially in the customer facing um, areas as well. And so what we immediately did was to put together something called MTN Women, which was first to help women find their voices. And that may sound like a very small thing, uh, but you would have heard it many, many times uh, today that we need to raise the voices of women in terms of identifying opportunities for them to speak about wanting to have those opportunities, 
um, helping them sort of attach them to mentors or coaches in order to help them understand what their future could be and how to get there. And so that program in itself has been very critical because over the last um, couple of years, we've had many women promoted into leadership. Uh, we have uh, an executive team that is almost 50% women as well. And we've been very careful as well to say, we're not ticking boxes here. We're not ticking boxes. We wanna make sure that we are also bringing women uh, into roles that are typically not uh, you know, women will. So for example, um, in MTM Benin, we have uh, our CTIO, who is a woman. Uh, I think today she may be the only female CTIO in the entire organization. And for me, this is, you know, as I was saying to Titi today, now that you're in that role, I'm expecting that to flow down into the rest of your organization. So we're being, I think the word uh, that has been used several times, very deliberate around making sure women are finding their voices, creating programs for women to sort of achieve whatever their ambitions are. And then also making sure that as we're making those decisions that we are being, you know, we're being very careful about how we're making those decisions. We don't want to report numbers. We want to report quality as well in terms of how that those decisions are being made. And my belief is that when we make those decisions, that flows through to the rest of the organization and it flows outwardly as well. Today we had the MTN Women uh, discussions workshop. There's just so much impact that we have when women see on the outside, see what's being done internally. Um, tomorrow we are launching something uh, called the MTN uh, Women CEO Challenge, where we're challenging other organizations within Benin uh, to pick women within the organization to be CEO for the day so that they can understand uh, that women can be in these roles, but also for women to also understand what happens in these roles. So lots of programs, but it's not about ticking boxes for us. It's about having really quality output that is sustainable for the future. Absolutely amazing. Thank you for that, Uche. Nampila, I'm going to ask you this question um, as from, our, from our chat box. How do we deal with the stereotypes that women in the workplace need to be seen as hard and that our softness is sometimes seen as our weakness? <laughs> yeah, so that question comes up a lot. And I think for me, uh, this is my personal perspective on the issue. We can't help being soft if that's what we are. So it, it depends on how you define softness. So women, we are built as women, and this, we can't change our physical makeup of being female. It's something that we need to use at our advantage. Organizations benefit more from people that think both from their head and their heart. So our softness can only be of the advantage of the growth of the organization. So I always say to people, don't be ashamed of wearing your pink dress. I'm looking at my sisters, we look all bright and colorful. It's fantastic, it's great. Because we shouldn't be just because we women try too much to fit in into the spaces that we, we have to show up as our authentic selves. So, so the stereotype will always be there, but I think more and more corporates and organizations everywhere we are, people are beginning to appreciate the softness that comes from female because it's something that we have brought into the table that these are the benefits of it. This is how we apply ourselves. It's only for the good of the organization. There's so much better that happens when you have that type of diversity. Imagine if we all wore, wore black. <laughs> every day. So it's, the diversity comes from exactly what Uche was saying, the quality of the conversation. I learn a lot just because people are different to me. They are not crazy, they're just not me. So it's, it's that appreciation of the differences. Mitwa, do you maybe want to add on to that? No, you're absolutely right. And you know, as Nompilo was speaking, I was smiling because I remember um, in my very first role as chief exec, for some reason, I saw it important for a CEO to be in pinstriped suits. And that's all I wore for at least the first one month um, of the of, of my stint there. And I remember, um, you know, a, a big light bulb uh, moment after giving one big speech um, in front of the whole organization. And as CEOs, and I'm coming in as a female CEO, already not sure if I can do this or not. And I remember in every time that I spoke, I would use certain words uh, that I 
thought CEOs must say. So it's about the strategy, it's about transformation, and I would say all these big words. And I remember coming off the stage and somebody in my team telling me that, you know, what you said was great, but it just didn't land at all. And in that moment, I realized, gosh, I just need to be myself because what I have intrinsically natural to me is what I bring to the area of work um, as a strength. And you know, women uh, leaders will tell you uh, our sh our strengths really shone during the period of COVID, right? So during the period of COVID, the same way we were thinking about our families and taking care of our children, we thought about our teams exactly the same way, going above and beyond maybe what typically a, a man would do. So I, I wear my my femininity, um, you know, really loud and bright. As you can see, I wear my duku. I don't mind, you know, I, I actually love the fact that I can have long braids today. I, I'm in a, in a bun tomorrow and the next day I'm in a pinstripe suit and and I think that keeps me alive the fact that I'm authentically true to who I am and it's so much easier to be honest ladies just to be yourself and yourself is good enough if not even better for the role that you need you to be in today absolutely be yourself my last question from our channel I'm going to direct it to you Yolanda it says what is MTN doing to ensure that males are also mentally ready for female for the female leadership shift so I think, I mean, the, 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 firstly, we must actually dispel of the notion of displacement, that in order for a woman to succeed at MTN, a, a man must be moved out. So far, we have not done that. We wait for opportunities. We've got four great CEOs on the, on the, on the screen right now that actually did not displace anyone. So nothing was taken away from anyone as part of that. Society is starting to discuss this issue in general around, actually, are we paying too much attention to women at the detriment of the boy child and the male colleague, right? And I think that's important that we also have that in our psyche as an organization. And about two weeks ago, I was actually having exactly the same conversation with someone and they were saying that they were putting a program together for, for men, this was just outside of work, for men to be able to actually come together as men, as the world is changing. What is happening to a lot of our male colleagues is that at home, now the wife is starting to earn more. The wife gets to see more opportunities. And this is actually creating a conflict even in the home environment. That home environment kind of conflict then plays itself out in the work environment. And then you see a lot of this tension that's actually building also in the, in the, in the, in the work environment. So what do we have to do as MTN? Obviously, we have to take the time and be deliberate and intentional about how we include everybody. MTN is an inclusive workplace. Mm -hmm. It is not a displacement work, uh, workplace. It is not a mutually exclusive workplace. It is for both men and women. And if we are not doing enough, please give us an idea. Please tell us what we should be doing more of in order to ensure that we continue on this journey around inclusiveness as a key theme of what we do. Absolutely, and I mean, you know, we are part of the he for she movement. So that should speak volumes and it's creating those spaces and those conversations with our men to ally with us in our environment. Oh, I wish this could go on and on, but now as we're wrapping up, I have one question for each of you. What solution needs, sorry, what solutions need to be put in place for more inclusive for a more inclusive workplace. So this question goes to each of you. I'm going to start with you, Mapula. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think you've said it, right? When you speak about solutions for a more inclusive uh, workplace, I think first and foremost, MTN has obviously been very uh, uh, front, sitting in the front line in terms of enabling that. Um, uh, two years ago, in uh, starting the He for She program, um, MTN joined an alliance which would allow us to aim towards a 50% representation of women, um, you know, employees in the organization, which I think is quite bold. And this is being sponsored at the highest level by our group CEO. And I think through these milestones that we are working towards, I think it re really helps us to chart a very ambitious 
path towards achieving that. I think, secondly, um, within the tech space, I mean, one of the things we are very excited about in Uganda, in Rwanda is that we are working actively to increase the representation of women in the technology side. Today, we're sitting with about 33% and we aim to increase that. And what that will do is that, you know, to the point that Mitwa made earlier, is that in the next few years, by the time we are needing women technology leaders to be ready to be CTIOs, such as what Ucha spoke about, you're not starting you know, the work at that point, you're starting it now. So I think that we're already on a, the right path, and I think the programs that we have really set us up for that success. Thank you so much, Mapula. Sylvia? I think, first of all, by having conversations such as what we are having today, um, there, there are many women who are being inspired, not only within the countries we're working, uh, or MTN at large, uh, but also out there, everybody who's following uh, this conversation. Um, I think, ultimately, all of us as women leaders need to know that we are always on a stage. People are watching us, people are looking at us. They look at the way you dress, they look at the way you speak, they look at the way you interact. Um, and they, all the young ladies and uh, uh, who are working in the organizations that are in are constantly asking, do, is this a person that I want to be? Is this person encouraging me every day to want to be a leader, a woman leader and, and rise up? So I think that is critical and uh, that's personal responsibility that we all have uh, in the positions of leadership, which I think are positions of privilege that we have been granted to be able to raise others up. Um, and then that, that translates then to beginning to actively think if each one of us as a leader, whether you're a male or a female, you're actively uh, pursuing uh, to, to find one person that you can raise. Um, especially when, you know, when you're in a place where you're a pioneer, sometimes it's often a lonely path, you're beating down the path for others. But if you're constantly looking back and making sure that you're not walking that path alone, and you're getting more, more women, more young ladies, whether it is, you know, we, yesterday we had our session for women at work yesterday evening. And when one of the ideas that came from the floor was one of the ladies said, why don't we go back to the schools uh, where we came from and inspire those young ladies. Let, let's use our lives to be an inspiration to them so that they can see that this reality is being lived. If we use our stories, I think it is enough to be able to inspire a lot more women to come to the table and also to demonstrate to the men that women actually can do this. And this is inevitably what will change the narrative and enable us to create a world where uh, equity is um, embraced a lot more progressively. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Uche, your thoughts? So I think one of the things that I, I, I want to just sort of bring in two points that has already been raised today. One is that we have such a young continent um, and the fact that the conversation around uh, inclusion and diversity, especially in technology, starts at a much younger age, right? And so the great thing is that we're, we're all doing some really great work through our foundation in terms of making sure that young people, especially young women, are gaining digital skills. I think if we can do that and we can start to open, you know, women's eyes to the possibility of what can be done with technology, then we're starting to build the pipeline at a much earlier stage than, you know, sometimes the challenge that we're facing now is that the pipeline is, is difficult to sort of build uh, at this stage. So sort of stepping back and saying, you know, what else can MTN do through the foundation to make sure that we're bringing women into the fold? Mitwa, your closing remarks? No, thanks. And uh, I, I agree with everything Mapula, Sylvia and Uche have said. And rather than maybe uh, repeat as to what I think organizations should do, um, I'll, Lynette, you allow me maybe to um, speak to the ladies within the organization who are listening, right? And maybe end uh, on an appeal to them uh, that while organizations such as MTN are doing all these uh, structured, deliberate things to create the space where they can feel safe enough to try, in, enough to thrive, et cetera, et cetera, um, it's also upon us as individuals, as women, uh, to be ready, right? Ready in the sense of, number one, are you super clear where you yourself want to go? And it's not a question that 
that maybe uh, for an answer comes uh, very easily to your mind, but take the time to really think about where I am today, one year, two years, three years down the line, and not in the cliche sense, really and truly honest to yourself, where do I want to go? And even if that answer doesn't come very clearly now, speak to somebody. Uh, Yolanda spoke so much about um, mentors. Lynette, you mentioned allies. Let's try and be clear as ladies within the organization, especially within MTN, where is it that you want to go? And with that clarity, you now start seeing the things that you currently don't have in your repertoire that you must start upskilling yourself in, right? Because like I said earlier, we're not talking diversity for diversity's sake. And Uche hinted on it, maybe she was being a bit more polite. She's not hiring women just because they're women. She wants to hire competent women. And so as women, you must be ready when those opportunities are presented that you're actually technically competent, right? Uh, we joked this morning with the Cameroonian ladies that, you know, ladies, we don't want to be presenting ourselves as 4G, you know, when we're delivering 3G kind of speeds, you know, just because we're in the telecom environment, you know what I mean. You want to really dig deep and make sure that the areas that you want to develop in at to, in order to get you to where you want to go, you're actually progressing uh, in that sense. And once you have that clarity, you've started making strides in terms of upskilling yourself, now show yourself. We can only see you if you show yourself. Jobs are advertised. As uh, Sylvia said right at the beginning, we want to be 120% perfect for the role. That's not necessary. You have passion for it. you are prepared for it. Throw your hat in the ring. The most that somebody can give you as feedback is one, maybe you're not ready for the role and you ask for deliberate feedback as to what you can do in order to imp improve uh, for the next time round, but throw your hat in the ring so we can see you. I think I wanted to end on that in form of an appeal to all the ladies within MTN who are listening. MTN is, I hope you heard that appeal. And it's something close to my heart, you know, when we speak about being future fit ready, you know, there's a lot of talk about chat, GPT, AI, web 3.0. Are you ready for it? We're creating these environments. Are we ready for it? Nompilo, your closing remarks. So for me, uh, I think, Lynette, thank you for making the time today, firstly, and the ladies. I, I think it, I, I wanted to do what Mito has just done, to speak to the women, particularly at MTN, because I think that's a sphere that we can immediately be able to influence, right? So we don't want to close over the difficult issues. Um, women, we're suffering through a lot of things. Uh, we, the, there is a pandemic called gender-based violence. Um, the uh, mental illness problems, mental health problems, uh, abuse, rape, etc. And though if we look at the stats across the continent, all those challenges are facing who? Women, right? So, so uh, Yolanda said something very important that who we are at home, you bring it at work, right? So that you, can't, you can't separate yourself from the person that you are. So inclusion is a very big topic. It's a very big word as well. It means different things to different people. So really, it would, be, it would be most useful if we have these dialogues and we take them seriously throughout the year. And also raise your hand in terms of, because MTN, always have, we always have these structured programs, like we've mentioned all of them. But we would not know what else we are missing for people to really feel safe, uh, and be in a place where they truly belong. Ralph used a, a phrase called belongingness. <laughs> I had to learn what that means. So it's a way we truly feel that we belong. For the organization to be able to change, be part of the change that you want to see. Do not think that you're seeing such a big organization. We're open to learning. And, and, and the, the challenge I wanted to put out there, that this is not an exco problem, it's not an executive problem, it's not a challenge only that's sitting at an executive level. It's all of us collectively having a conversation about what future and the legacy we want to leave for MTN. That would be my appeal. You've heard the second appeal. I don't think we need to even say more. The second appeal. Be part of the change you want to see. Raise your hand. Yolanda, before I ask you, you know, we talked about inclusivity, right? And we spoke about uh, young mentors, 25-year-old young mentors. We've got a question, and I think we would not do justice if we don't ask it. There's a question that says, and it's directed at you, for a young woman in her early 20s wanting to reach your level with less than five years work experience, what is your advice to get a higher corporate step? Okay, my advice to them 
is these five C's that I'm going to go through very, very quickly. Okay, the first one is around congruence. Make sure that you've got a purpose for your life, and then you set goals for your life, and then you start actually putting the actions behind that, and that make sure that there is congruence in those three things. Your goals, your actions, and your actions ultimately become who you become. Right, so that is, uh, so if you're not sure where to start, how to do it, there's Nombilo here. She's the mother hen here. So you can go to her. Go to Mitwa to be the rebel. Go to Sylvia to be the, <laughs> the orator. So can I pick on everyone? No, I'm not gonna do that today. Okay, but my point is, you actually have to change your actions to meet your expectations, right? That's the first C. The second one is competence. Mitwa, Uche and everyone here spoke a lot about competence. So I'm not going to spend the time on it, but it is important that you are the best that you can be in whatever you choose to do. In whatever you choose to do. Remember, it, if you only read about 10 minutes to 15 minutes a day, you will automatically be in the top 10% in your industry because people are just lazy to read. So your knowledge base is going to be so much bigger and therefore your experience and your expectations of stuff will be so much bigger, increasing your competence. Curiosity, I mean, Lynette just spoke about it. Do you know Chat GPT? What can it do? What can it not do? I've delivered now a speech based on ChatGPT, which I had to augment myself, but it was based on what ChatGPT actually gave me, and it was brilliant. Everyone loved it. So what are you doing to actually increase your level of curiosity? And you have to institutionalize curiosity in yourself. The world is changing at a much faster rate than we've ever seen in, uh, before. The people that will be relevant in the room are the people that keep up to date. Um, the fourth one is courage. I've spoken to courage, so I'm not going to spend the time actually talking about it. But this is what I'm going to say relating to opening yourselves up for opportunity, which is what Sylvia was talking about. At the end of the day, when we got promoted, even me, even Ampilo, everyone here, Uche, you name them, we all get promoted into positions of incompetence. This is important. So we all have to learn in that new environment. So do not be scared to put yourself out there. Have the courage. Remember the courage that we're talking about is not courage 365 days, 24 seven. It's not, it's only having courage when it matters. When it's time to raise your hand, that only happens most probably once a day that you have to have that courage. Please exercise it, it's only 30 seconds, it's only five seconds. Use that five seconds to be courageous. And lastly is consistency. Right? It is only people that are consistently trying to improve themselves, consistently trying to be more competent, consistently trying to deliver on what they need to deliver on, and actually going out there and saying, I want to be 1% better than yesterday, but I'll keep on going every day to get there, that are absolutely champions in their fields. They start off like you and me, and they become champions. So you can be that champion as well. So as a 25-year-old, as a 20-something-year-old who wants to be sitting here, you're going to have to play your part as well. Five Cs. Congruence, competence, curiosity, courage, and last but not least, consistency. You've heard it. I hope you took these notes down. If you didn't, well, you can always watch and play back, watch and play back. And if you don't know, I'm one of those people. I stalk all of them on their social media pages. I'm there liking, I'm there commenting, I'm there watching what they're doing. So I'm going to encourage you all to follow them on their various social media pages, as well as continue to follow us. For those who are not MTN is watching us, please continue to follow us as well on our MTN group social media pages. And I hope you guys have been hashtagging tomorrow doing tomorrow for today oh, like i'm you know i could just i don't say drop mic i don't know drop book <laughs> drop back gadget i am inspired what an amazing international women's day it's been for me i think we're going to go to our poll results now are we ready team do we have the results up what solutions need to be put in place for a more inclusive workspace and there you have it, diversity, mentorship, equal pay. There's some tiny, tiny ones. Work-life balance, transparency. We're going to put this up and we're going to keep it. I would encourage each and every one of you to even, you know, I don't like printing because, you know, environment, ESG, we're trying not to print. 
So save it as a screensaver, you know, take the picture, save it on your phone, go back to it so that when you're ready to have these conversations or when we are on that work at women platform and there's certain things that you see or, you know, you want to be discussed, feel free to put it there. So there you have it. Wow. Amazing. Thank you so much. You know, it's really been an honor to say I'm honored is an understatement. Um, you know, sitting amongst our leadership here has been truly, being in their presence is inspiring, thought-provoking, and hopeful that as we continue these conversations, create the spaces, and unlearn what the old narrative on women in leadership is, we hope and we have faith that the seeds we are planting now for our future daughters, women, girls, is for them to never have to have these conversations, fight these fights, but to be rightfully seated where they're meant to be. For me, in the words of Maya Angelou, you are all phenomenal women. Let us continue to celebrate all month long and all year long. Until next time, don't forget to hashtag doing for tomorrow today. Ladies, it's been absolutely amazing. We'd like to thank Numpilo and her team for organizing this event. We really appreciate you. It's an honor. We appreciate you and we thank you. And we know that we're going to continue to drive these conversations with you. That's it from us. Thank you.